Hello. <laughs> Did that surprise you? Just your eyes. You know, just everything that those, everything that the tabloids print isn't true. Have you got anything to say to that? Well, you know, it's just rough. Like I saw some of the things about the concert in today's paper, and they were talking about, oh, well, it wasn't that out. You know, some papers would say, oh, they they barraged the audience with four-letter words, and others said it was disappointing because it wasn't as outrageous as they wanted. So it's kind of like I just wish they just, you know, yeah, write about stupid it. people say whatever they want. I mean, it's like they want to sell their papers, man. What, what do your parents say about all this? Do they know? Have they seen the headlines? They've seen it. They know what's true and what's not yes. true. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like these damn, you know, papers just print over there. They want to print to sell, you know, sell the papers. You know, two weeks from now, they say the same thing about, you know, whoever. You know what I mean? It's just like those people should be stopped, man. They make me sick to my stomach. newspaper doesn't have a proprietor, it can dance to its own tune. Porque no importa que usted piense que vive en una sociedad sofisticada, usted, si sí, usted... Thames Television has exported programs to 126 countries. Adrian, lass mich mal den Pickel ausdrücken. More than any other ITV company. Tens, a nice little earner for Britain. Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel? Yes, it's me, Mrs. Steed? It can't be. It's a dream. A dream. A tiny dream. If you insist. Ow! Well, you're real enough, but... Rushton built some infernal machine. Chivers used it on the tank. And you just happened to be inside. How did you guess? Tell me, Steve, is everything to scale? <laughs> Now, if you can get into a position where I can reach you, on the corner. Will you move it further onto the desk? Any assistance in keeping it taut will be appreciated, Mrs. Peel. Thanks. How are we doing? Another tub should do it. Oh. Hi, Rick Mail here. I don't know if you're like me, immensely rich, talented, handsome. Isn't it a bore? Well, I found the answer. Zelda Link's Awakening from Nintendo. You play a medieval elf named Link. You travel through many worlds, meeting endless characters on your eternal adventures. So hey, next time you're Rick Mail, why not try Zelda Link's Awakening? I think you'll like it. Ciao. Zelda, involved in an inexhaustible Nintendo. Oracle's new fast TV guide. There's so much on it. In the middle of the journey of our life, I came to myself within a dark wood where the straight way was lost. Ah, how hard it is to tell of that wood, savage and harsh and dense, the thought of which renews my fear. So bitter is it 
that death is hardly more. You're practically the sole survivor of the uh, shipwreck. Uh, now, most of the rest of the crew in the executive uh, field have either resigned or got the sack. What went wrong? Well, I think there were four things that no one could have anticipated, really, when we all started out, a, a merry bunch of uh, programme makers. One was that uh, a strike would happen 30 seconds after we went on the air. There was a considerable drop in the advertising revenue and a, a switch to newspapers. Uh, the government, at a certain stage, increased the levy so that the money we wanted to make programmes we hadn't got. And also, the BBC uh, tended to uh, switch its commercialism to the weekend and programme very strongly and very effectively <coughs> against us. Philip Whitehead, as an experienced television producer, both for BBC and for commercial television, and now your Labour MP for Derby North, would you uh, agree with that analysis? I'd agree with some of it, but I think beyond that, given that LWT had a shaky base, it also had immensely talented programme makers. They were good competitors, they were good producers, they were good executives. People like Cyril Bennett, Michael Peacock and so on. All these people went in, then when the financial squeeze came on them, of course, nobody protected them and they were all thrown out. And from then on, LWT has gone steadily down. Why did... Uh, sorry, you wanted to say something? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say LWT has gone steadily down in, in many respects because it is, you know, in many, as far as other companies are concerned, it's doing more than pretty well. Well, let you me don't ask think you. I just wanted to, this last week. I just wanted to ask you this. Uh, in program terms. In no, terms I, of executives, management, morale of the company. No, the I events of this so. last week. I, you think they've boosted morale? Do you? Philip, All these staring you straight fired? in the eye, I can yes. tell you that there is a buoyancy on the floor, on the shop floor at London Weekend Television at the moment. And I've experienced it because I've worked there over the last weekend. Why do you think, that's what I was going to ask you, why do you think that Yorkshire Television, which was also a new company and also had a kind of beguiling prospectus like you did, has done pretty well on the whole in the field of documentary and drama and the kind of promises that you were made, but that you haven't been able to fulfil these promises? In the field of documentary and drama, yes. I think we have, we may not have been successful with every programme that we've attempted, but our record of making programmes, making new programmes... You wound up the current programs, affairs field. You had a current affairs, uh, you were going to have current affairs on yes. Sunday afternoon and drama fact, on one night. Uh, 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 yes, uh, if we could put exist. it in perspective, it was Michael Peacock who wound up the current affairs field. It wasn't that we were doing no current affairs programmes, because Frost on Friday is a current affairs programme, and a very good one, and a very commercial one. Is it coming it, back? Yes, we'll answer that later in a couple of weeks' time. Well, I think we ought to know now. Yes, well, we can't go off one subject. Again, which were in the original contract. But it, can we come to that when I finished on this question? We, Michael Peacock wound that up, and I think, in fact, I'm very sure, that Rupert Murdoch will reinstate the public affairs unit in London Weekend Television. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun that day, didn't we? Yeah, we certainly did. <laughs> Of course, filming isn't all there is to making a TV programme. No, there's this part as well. This is the studio part. For instance, if we wanted to show a Roman classroom in a programme, we couldn't very well go out and film one because there aren't any Roman classrooms left to film. So we get a designer to build one for us. Here it is. Looks good, doesn't it? Mind you, it's not quite so impressive if we have a look round the back. Look good, these pillars, don't they? Come and have a look. Pity it's only got three sides. <laughs> and here you see how the scenery is propped up. Now, nobody normally sees this part of the studio so it doesn't matter what it looks like. Remember the god Janus? Here he is. But of course, he's not exactly carved out of stone. Look, it's a polystyrene replica. Much cheaper and much quicker to make. So, all this we put into a TV studio. Cameras, microphones, and lights. Ah, oh, dear. This is high karate, and this unsuspecting girl is about to catch its irresistible scent. The high karate scent that can turn a usually docile woman. 
into a ravenous creature. Oh, look out, mate! Oh, oh, shit! Oh! A scent so irresistible that every pack of high karate carries essential instructions on self-defense. High karate aftershave. Be careful how you use it. Someday. I've thought about you so much. I even prayed that nothing would happen to you. I thought about you too. A lot. <sighs> Yet when we meet again, you don't recognize me. Well, you had a hat like that and <sighs> six months ago. It was terribly dark. Think you know me next time? We can always meet in the dark. When do we try? Tonight. Oh, I can't. I'm working. What about tomorrow? What time does it get dark in New York? <laughs> oh, about eight. So there you are. It's there. And you go. Sorry. Where are we going? I'm trying to get you king-sized again. Hold on. Here's your chance. I'm not sure I shouldn't keep you like this. After all, it's one way to bag a man. now stay and await developments big developments simple why make your life more complicated easily, home improvement loans, mortgages, and if you're in the black, no personal current account charges whatsoever. Shelter your family from financial storms with the Royal Bank of Scotland. Could, could we come on to Mr. Murdoch now, who is the sort of you know, new white hope of London weekend television? What makes you think, with his sort of record, the son of the news of the world, which are uh, popular papers, but hardly quality ones, that he's going to do anything to improve the quality of London weekend? Well, we only know in this country, people only know of his, his record in England. I mean, in Australia, he has a paper called The Australian, which is a first-class quality newspaper. And he runs that very effectively and very successfully. One of the things that we could do with that London weekend is to get a little bit of that smell of success that came with a newspaper, The Sun, which nobody else had been able to make work. Well, I think of that swinging smell of success with Mr Murdoch's Australian television companies. We actually know what Mr Murdoch's television companies are like. We know what their schedules are like. We know that they don't put on much original material. We know that they are much worse than the new schedules being offered for London Weekend, with old films and repeats and so on. We're told that Mr Murdoch owns the world record in having the, the most old films on in one day. That gives me cause for concern. I'm surprised it doesn't concern the ITA. Maybe it does now. You've been to the ITA, Philip, uh, yeah. to, to ask them to revoke the licence for LWT. You've spoken in Parliament about it. Uh, don't you think that uh, Mr Murdoch should be given a chance to prove what he can do? Yes, I didn't want the licence revoked. What I would like the ITA to do is this. I would like them, first of all, to examine whether this contract is viable or not. Because obviously something of the problems which Jimmy referred to at the beginning is at the basis of the whole trouble. Maybe two and a half days in the London area just mm. doesn't give you enough money. And if that is going to mean a deterioration in programmes and the constant sacrifice of executives time after time after time, obviously we've got to stop it, we've got to think again, maybe we've got to have a merger. If they think this is viable, what I would like them to do is to call in the franchise and then say to Mr Murdoch, all right, you had confidence in this company, we have certain reservations about you because of your newspapers and so on, but we will allow you to make a bid. Put up your programme schedules, put up the names of your, your executives. We don't even know who these people are at the moment. I don't know who's replaced Stella Richmond. Maybe Jimmy can tell us who the programme controller is. Well, the head of programmes at the moment who is, is the a, programme a controller? Rex Firkin, who I'm sure you know and has yes. a, a, he has a that very name. excellent record. And who is the managing director? 
uh, the general manager is Vic Gardner, who, who came is, from the shop floor in the is, industry, came from the BBC. And who is the head of entertainment? The head of entertainment, we haven't won. But if you, if you think that somebody can just wave a magic wand, if you know, if you know that little about the business, and produce the calibre of man that we want overnight, and maybe make a, a mistake, which is the last thing I think that anybody wants to do, because you're dealing with, you're dealing with human beings. Uh, the colour films being shown in today's trade test transmission are at 20 past 10, the day's first showing of the colour receiver installation film. At 11.30, Souvenirs from Sweden. At 5 past 12, another showing of the colour receiver installation film. At 2.30, Amsterdam. And at 10 past 3, another chance to see the colour receiver installation film. At 3.30, it's the tube that makes the colour. At 4.30, land reclamation. At 5.30, a journey into the Weald of Kent. And at 6.15 we have tuning information followed by the colour film One Jump Ahead. I didn't leave. What's all this little man? I know, it's been blown off. <laughs> and the rocks there. Terrible, isn't it? Bits here all shooting out the sparks. Looks very good. It does. Looks yeah. very good.